Well, if you didn't know before, you damn sure know now. Metal Wrestling is the number one pro wrestling company in the world, no matter what the EVP of NLW, Triple H, says. Now... I will take some questions, but please refrain from mentioning you know who until the very end. And if you saw the show, you know damn well who I mean. So let's get the first question from you in the front. Uh, yeah, Mr. Austin, I just want to say um, an excellent night of pro wrestling. Uh, we're all, you know, fans of wrestling at the end of the day. And I just wanted to thank you personally. Um, how are you feeling after such an excellent opening night? Oh, well, first of all, I want to stop you there. Do not thank me. I'm just the guy with the money who bankrolled this. You want to be thanking the guys and girls who put their bodies on the line. We saw John Cena versus Cody Rhodes, a great, great main event. We saw CM Punk and Jushin Thunder Liger in the opener and a great women's title match to go to Revival to see who would chase the championship, and that's Riho and Candice LeRae. They set the bar for women's wrestling in this company, and all I can say after a great night, I'm feeling great. And you know what? I'm going to go home, drink a beer, and I'm going to celebrate because this is just the beginning. Metal wrestling is going to be in the face of pro wrestling for years to come. Um, yeah, Austin, it was a great night, but it was nearly spoiled, wasn't it? By Kevin Owens and the Undisputed Era jumping the barricade at the end of the show, um, attacking you and also attacking the, uh, the commentator, Victor Wallace. Tell me, do you have any plans for retaliation on these guys? Well... I'm going to get all the retaliation I need against the Undisputed Era when I step inside Lethal Lockdown with my boys, CM Punk, John Cena, and now Finn Balor. We will all fight the Undisputed Era in that cage and leave them a bloody heap. As for Kevin Owens, I have the chance to tear him apart on NLW in Vegas. So KO, if you're still watching, hell, I'm ready for you, and if you fought I was giving your ass a beating so bad. This time, just wait until we're in Vegas in a ring. And I'm telling you, I don't care if I'm on NLW's turf. I'm still going to kick your ass, and that's the bottom line. Um, yeah, well, um, Austin, we also uh, saw some great action, as you said. Um, Punk and Liger, particularly, I just wanted to kind of shout out. They really brought it, and it did give me vibes of Liger and Pillman from, you know, back in the 90s. And we, we did see Liger compete on NLW too. But he seemed a little bit off. What exactly is the nature of Jushin Thunder Liger's contract? Well, I don't want to talk about business specifics. All I will say is that Liger is under a contract which allows him to work additional dates provided they do not clash with metal. So, um, yeah, as for wherever he wants to go, if he wants to go on to NLW, and, you know, we saw it. He attacked Ricochet, and you know what? It's not the kind of thing I would have done, but hell, I don't know what was going through his mind. But the guy that I met backstage at Metal, so humble, so likable, and the guy who faced CM Punk, that was the Liger that I signed. I don't know what's going on, what he's doing, showing up in purple on NLW. Doesn't seem like the same guy I met earlier tonight. But yeah, he's free to work wherever he wants as long as it doesn't clash with my shows. And um, Keith Lee as well, the limitless one, the NLW Atlas champion, his arrival um, on the show, was that was that approved? Well, if it wasn't approved, why would I have played his music, you dumbass? Oh my god, well, I'll let, sorry. I'm still I'm still a little bit angry about uh, Kevin Owens and all that, but uh, yeah, Keith Lee, his arrival was approved. Triple H sent him over to cause chaos, and hell, he came right up to me and said, Steve, as a fellow Texan, I'm not here to cause any trouble. I just want to fight one man, and you know what? Hell, more power to him. And if you want, you know, any NLW wrestler who wants to show up on my show, go ahead. It's an open door policy. Whether Triple H, your little boss, or Shawn Michaels, the commissioner, if they allow it, fine. Get your ass over here, make your statement, and Keith Lee did just that, and, you know, I wish it was happening on a metal show, but unfortunately, I'm not sure that Triple H would let that happen. So, Keith Lee and Rollins at WrestleMania, it's going to be special. Uh, the tag team division as well, Mr. Austin, already looks stacked. Um, but there was supposed to be a match, wasn't there? Um, War Machine and Proud and Powerful. Uh, why did that not take place tonight? Well, I did feel that the show was already running long as it did. You know, a whole hour of action. Um, but, you know, they all worked their asses off. And um, actually, I spoke to Hanson earlier today. He was suffering from a uh, torn ligament in his hand. And he was ready to go, man. He was ready to fight. But, you know what? I care about the safety of my fighters. And 
I don't want them going out if it's not 100%. If they can't go 100% for that crowd, I don't want them competing. So as much as Hanson wanted to push through it, I decided to postpone that match. But next week, I can assure you, War Machine, proud and powerful, they'll go one-on-one, -on -one, two two-on-two even, and the winner of that match will go to Revival and face either the Kings of Wrestling or the Gorillas of Destiny because that's the match that I've got planned for medals uh, at the Scrapyard. And also, I would like to actually ask about that. What exactly is um, this metal at the scrapyard? We heard it uh, mentioned by commentary tonight, but can you give us some more details about that show? Well, you'll have to wait until opening that, but essentially it's to um, basically see who the toughest guy in the scrapyard is. And what the scrapyard is, is a place where the metal wrestlers, they can ply their craft and um, fight. So you got Pete Dunn, I believe. He will be facing uh, Kofi Kingston. That's what I'm playing at the moment. Um, you know, big ramifications there. As I said, Kings of Wrestling going up against the Gorillas of Destiny. Um, you'll see highlights of that on YouTube. So it's essentially like um, a supplementary show just to kind of whet your appetite for the next NLW. Oh boy, I had a slip of the tongue there. NLW, what the hell am I saying? Metal Wrestling. Metal Wrestling show. So um, yeah, you'll see a bunch of guys on there uh, and girls trying to really um, bump up their records and try and uh, build some momentum up on that show. So it's definitely going to be worth checking out. There's going to be some gritty wrestling on that show. So do tune in. There's going to be some more match announcements. And in fact, I'll reveal more about uh, the next episode of Metal and Revival on the first episode of Metal at Scrapyard. Um, yeah, there's going to be some great matches on there. I, I can't wait, honestly, Austin. Um, and Monty Brown as well. Um, will he have any part of that match? After all, we, um, we saw him earlier tonight against EC3 pouncing him out of the ring. Is Monty Brown signed? Well, um, first of all, good riddance to you, EC3. Hope you make your millions, but get the hell out of my arena. I want people here that want to be here. And Monty Brown, the alpha male, he wants to be competing in the combat zone. And, well, hell, you saw it. He delivered a brutal pounce, and yeah, I'd like to see him compete. He is signed to a metal contract, but um, he won't be competing on the medal at the Scrapyard event nor will he be competing next week, but I am working out uh, one of the first matches for him to be competing in. Um, you know, it's just a matter of time before you see Monty Brown in that ring. And the women's division as well. Um, great display from them. What are your plans for the future of that division? Um, well, all I'm going to say is a lot of people see the women's division in many companies as a gimmick as its own thing. I say they're equal to, sometimes even better than the men, and I want them to know that I'm going to push them as main attractions. Because, let's face it, they're some of the toughest women in the world. You saw Riho and Candice LeRae on the surface. They look kind, they look cuddly, yeah, sure. But they will kick your ass. And that's exactly what they did. The Poison Pixie, Riho, they both tore it up in that ring. And I cannot wait for more women's action here in this company. We're going to see a massive Fatal 4-Way match at Revival to crown the first ever Women's Knockouts Champion here on this show. And we're going to see uh, the next week, I believe, Trish Stratus and Sasha Banks. That's going to be a barn burner. We're going to see uh, Gail Kim in action on At the Scrapyard. In fact, I can announce now that Ember Moon, she's already going to be going through to the Knockouts title match at Revival because I could not bear to see her get screwed over by Triple H, Ronda Rousey, all of that on NLW 100. You saw it. So, uh, yeah, justice for her. She gets her opportunity. Um, we'll see who qualifies. You know, Tennille Dashwood as well is someone who uh, has tore it up on the independents recently. I'm going to bring her in. She'll be facing Gail Kim at the scrapyard, and the winner of that match will go to Revivals. So, yeah, a lot, of, a lot of talented women on this roster, and I can't wait to see what they do in the future. So, um, yeah, Revival. You talked about Revival. What, um, what more matches are planned for that? So I think that uh, the six matches we got planned at the moment are the ones that are set in stone. Uh, you got the Lethal Lockdown match in the main event, the Undisputed Era, versus my team. Uh, that's a personal issue. And then you got the title match, uh, Metalweight title, Samoa Joe, Andrew McIntyre going one-on-one. -on -one. That's going to be insane. Another insane match, the Exploding Bob Wire death match. A lot of people told me not to put this match on. But Steve Austin doesn't listen to the critics when they're wrong. So you know what I think? I think Edge and John Moxley are going to tear each other apart. Likewise, the hardcore title match, Darby Allin, Sammy Callahan, And then you got the heavy metal tag team titles on the line and the knockouts title on the line on the same night. I cannot wait. But yeah, we're running long at the minute. I just want to answer two more questions and then we'll be done. Yeah, um, Hangman Adam Page, he wasn't having a great night. Um, you know, we saw him 
seemingly at his worst, at a low point. Why did you single him out as the most underrated star a couple weeks ago? Why? Well, you just look at his work. You look at his work everywhere he's been. Up until he came to medal, he was one of the top stars on the independent scene in the entire world, and now, I don't know what the hell's happened to him, man, but I've tried to talk some sense into him. I can't get a hold of him, but, um, yeah, he needs confidence. And I know Stone Cold, old Stone Cold, he's lost his confidence in the past, but sometimes you just gotta drink a beer, get off the couch, and do something about it. And I think that if Hangman Page applies himself, he could be the best wrestler on this show, and that is a promise. Even if Cody may not have agreed with my decision, you know? It is what it is. Okay, last question. Okay, right, you mentioned Cody, and... Right, we've got to talk about the elephant in the room. Um, Roman Reigns. What's the deal with Roman Reigns? He attacked Cody at the end of that show. Obviously, they've got some history on metal. Um, what, what do you make of it? Is Roman Reigns a member of the roster? Okay, so... I'll, I'll announce it now, right? Roman Reigns is signed to metal wrestling. Yeah. Um, he... Uh, was out of action for a long time after what went down between him and Cody Rhodes and the Horsemen, Hangman Page actually as well. So um, yeah, whatever the beef between Roman Reigns and Cody Rhodes is, obviously that happened on metal a long time before I was in charge of this show. So that's none of my business. But my business is to create the best environment for pro wrestling. And I think that Roman Reigns should have been brought back a long time ago. He's powerful, he's deadly, and you know what? He's a man on a mission. So Roman Reigns, you'll be seeing a lot more of him on metal wrestling. Um, at the moment, though, still trying to agree to some contract specifics. But as of right now, he's penned in to be a metal wrestling star. And hell, I cannot wait to see what he does. As for Cody, um, yeah, I spoke to him after the show. He did go a little bit long, didn't he? Um, yeah, well, that's, uh, that's Cody. Um, but Roman Reigns, man, there is nothing fun about that guy. He's deadly, he's devastating, and all I'm gonna say is, about that, um, just wait and see what Roman Reigns has in store for metal wrestling. And, yeah, that's about it for me. If you want to see me next, I'm gonna be at NLW 103 in Vegas, kicking the living hell out of Kevin Owens. And that's the bottom line, because Stone Cold said so, and if you didn't believe it before, metal wrestling is taking over the pro wrestling world. Aw, oh, hell yeah.